Hi there, you're listening to Unnatural Selection, the show about newsy type stuff and things. Third time's the charm. My name is George. My name is Tom. And my name is Adam. And with our powers combined, we are Unnatural Selection. Make sure you visit us at our salubrious home on the web, unnaturalshow.com, if you are hoping to launch a ransomware attack against George Salvatore Tsipos. Now would be the time, because apparently you can have podcasts or you can have ransomware protection, but you can't have both. <laughs> I love the journey yeah. that we've been on over what the What a journey. 13 years now or something, whatever we're up to. And what every time we do the show. Yeah, has changed. Every time we do the show. It's new issues. New there problems. is a new era. Yeah. Yeah. The Windows yeah. is like, like your ransomware is going to fuck you. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Fun. Absolutely chaotic. And I would love, I know we don't have any fans who would be like this oh, at all. I thought that There's was the anyone. end of the sentence. No, no. I know no, we don't no. have any fans, um, but... <laughs> If we had any fans who were like this who just sit on our Twitch page just waiting for us to go live, they would have been treated to quite a show there because the Twitch part was working and they would have just seen a video start up with us being like, what the fuck is going on? I don't get why that... And then it stops. And then, it's, and then it starts up again going, probably George yelling something profane. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, that sounds right. This, this is an abstract episode. <laughs> is this like <laughs> their, you know, season premiere, like five seasons in, like the fucking Sopranos, where everything's uh, yes. just weird in the, the first episode. The episode where George finally has a full mental breakdown live on air. Yeah. Um, We've had several of those, let's be honest. Ah, uh, hurtful. So this is a news and <laughs> politics podcast where we talk about uh, newsy type stuff and things, as you heard. Um, and uh, top story this week, um, everyone's favorite uh, finance, uh, what was it, fin- uh, FinDom, uh, Philip Lowe will, be, um, not, not, will not be reappointed as the Reserve no. Bank Australia governor when his term ends in September. And colour me... Fucking shocked. <laughs> I am shook. Shook. Really shook. <laughs> man, if, if Phil Lowe's not safe, you know, what does that mean for the rest of us? I mean, uh, there was a great um, <laughs> notification that came uh, to my phone. I love the ABC News notifications. Um, and uh, and uh, the, the wording said something to the effect of... Um, the ABC understands that Philip, no- Philip Lowe will not be reappointed as RBA governor... And uh, my response was, George Tsipas also understands <laughs> that <laughs> Philip Lowe will not be reappointed as RBA governor and has done for some time now. <laughs> yeah, like, I think, uh, much like we talked about uh, a few weeks ago and if we've talked about Philip Lowe and his uh, his fun announcements of raising interest rates and just his general public persona, how everyone now seems to know who the RBA governor is uh, mm. lately, whilst who gave a fuck for the past couple decades in, like, casual conversation. Mm. So, yeah, uh, it, it comes as a shock that uh, to, this would be whom? news for oh, anyone. Right, right, like, right, right. yeah, so I mean, like, you know, like, we all know who this guy is, and the only reason we know that is because something's going terribly wrong. Um, there was a piece on um, the... Uh, uh, on the ABC this week, which is talking about uh, Philip Lowe's legacy. And now that he's leaving and he's, he's been replaced by Michelle Bullock, who's the first female lead of, uh, of the RBA. Um, so, uh, so, so I can have a Finn dominatrix instead of a Finn Dom, um, as, as we did previously punishing me well, by extracting money from me, uh, which is nice. Mm. Uh, yeah. Well, that, that probably goes to a larger point, which is they've changed the head. Mm. But the decision doesn't necessarily mean the decisions will be any different. Well, yeah, especially <laughs> considering she was serving as his deputy up until um, you know thirty seconds ago before she robe speared him, um, <laughs> before he got guillotined. Um, yeah, it, it does. Yeah, we we like presumably all of the. Well, here's the thing: is there was that report that came out a couple of months ago, which talked about the operations of the RBA and said it was a very top-down structure, and and people within the organization didn't feel the ability to sort of speak up and challenge decisions, and they made a bunch of recommendations and reforms, which are still being implemented. But like, so so it does suggest that maybe there's more information coming from the bottom up that might be heard with new leadership. But also, Michelle Bullock was the deputy of the organization. Mm prior to this so presumably she was more or less in lockstep with philip lowe and his strategy and his ideals um otherwise she probably wouldn't have gotten promoted to that position in the first place so as to whether the policy 
changes or it's just a continuation of the same policy. It's it's sort of too soon to say, but I wouldn't be expecting Michelle Bullock to be a hero, hero of the revolution just yet. Oh um, man, can you imagine the the you, the first time you decide to raise interest rates as the replacement of Philip Lowe? She fucking like, what? <laughs> like yeah, you'd be like, okay, so now I'm the person and I'm looking at all the numbers. We've had our massive board meetings, we've done whatever. Oh god, I have to raise interest rates, don't uh, I? Um, oh boy. Man, this is gonna be hell. I think purely <laughs> like, yeah. from a like self-preservation standpoint, she's probably gonna want to like leave rates on hold for a minute and just kind of like wait and see. That's that's sort of what I'm expecting. But um you never know. Anyway, no. the the um the the economy, um, you know, the markets saw the changing of the guards and um and you know they they were sort of sanguine and circumspect and and they sat back and <laughs> no. Uh, no 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 they saw the changing of the guard and they were saying yeah who knows what this portends for the future of the market and they said let's wait and see and act judiciously just kidding yeah. um, I fucking loved it everyone loved it they're like woo <laughs> party at Phil's house <laughs> 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 um, yeah and the market was um, was yeah. was very happy that day it was a wave of green uh, <laughs> across all of the various apps. But um, yeah, presumably that suggests that the market thinks that you know no feel low equals no interest rates. But boy, are they going to be sorely disappointed! Because like it's just going to dive. It's going to do a swan dive off a cliff. Here's the thing. Next up, she raises the rate. Here's the thing. Is like Adam, are you telling me that the market's just a graph of rich people's feelings and not indicative of the intrinsic value of the commodities under uh, underwriting those? Uh, um, uh, those assumptions. Those, those assumptions. Yeah. Uh, yes, that's yes. exactly what I'm saying. I'm telling you. Um, so yeah, so there's a lot of talk about what what she, what, she, what her approach is and how she's going to do things differently and all this sort of stuff. But she's very consultative, apparently. She listens okay, to people. Sure. I mean, that's the bare minimum for a <laughs> position <laughs> in leadership of any organization. Um, so, but interestingly enough, there was commentary on the ABC this week where they were talking about. Phil Lowe's legacy and what he left behind, and um, you know his whether head. whether his big fat head and uh, whether the criticisms of him were fair or not. And uh, something that was interesting was an economist was on the ABC he was talking about how, um, like Phil Lowe, like his job is to keep inflation between the target range, right, and keep un- unemployment down. Those are the dual mandates of the RBA, and at both. He's been pretty not good. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, both it, th- those things have been terrible. <laughs> he had a pretty good send off from former RBA governor Bernie Fraser. Um, but, you know, saying that he's, he, I quote, I think he's done a very good job um, and said that he made one mistake, which was saying that they weren't going to raise interest rates until 2024. I um, mean, that was the one mistake that he made. But this this other guy on ABC was basically saying, like, okay, your job was to keep inflation between the target rate of 2 or 3%. In the, you know... It is currently seven? In the six years prior to this, it was well below target. And then since the coronavirus, it's been well above target. It's like... And and, and there was an analysis which, which suggested for that period in his early tenure where um, inflation was below that target of, you know, sort of 2.5%. There were, by not loosening up monetary policy more, there were... Uh, an extra 270,000 people that didn't have jobs over that period that probably should have had jobs because he was too conservative. He's like, so if we're talking about what he did well, the answer is mostly nothing (laughs) because before the pandemic, inflation was too low. And then since the pandemic, inflation has been too high. And that's the one job that an RBA governor is supposed to do correctly is to put inflation between 2 and 3%. But that's like entirely not his fault, given the world circumstances. That okay, have been there okay, but if you're getting paid nine hundred and eleven thousand dollars a year, you should have like a one, like at least a twenty percent hit rate. <laughs> I don't know. I I think honestly, he's just it's just the government going. We need we need a fall guy, and you are the fall guy for this particular. Situation. What is some someone who looks it like a just, goat is, that we can put all Chalmers, of our sins into, and then sacrifice that goat? Out. Some sort of scapegoat, if you will, who will take the sins of the nation <laughs> on our is, behalf. Is, Chavez coming out with a guillotine and just like forcing his head there, being like, "I really like," because this is the other thing. 
Chalmers has to get on a plane with Philip Lowe to go to the no. G20. Oh, awkward. <laughs> Jim Chalmers obviously being the person, the treasurer being the person mm. that basically fired him. Mm. Uh, although allegedly it was Cabinet's decision, but yeah, sure. So... He's still yeah. the one that has to do it. <laughs> yeah, so gets on a plane with him while holding a guillotine above his head, just like... Hey, um, no, so you yeah. still you still good for Thursday? I'll I'll swing by and pick you up on the way to the airport. No, no, really, it's no trouble. Uh, anyway, I, so, I I agree yeah. that Philip Lowe is not the center of the universe when it comes to monetary policy. Like, especially the the rampant inflation of the last couple of years has been due to international factors that are beyond the Australian Reserve Bank of Australia's you know control. I appreciate that. But also, mm. don't then go ahead and give forward guidance saying we're not going to raise interest rates until 2024. And then also be a complete arrogant prick about being yeah. called on that. Like when someone says yeah, like, hey, yeah. you give us this forward guidance so people can make plans into the future. The forward guidance was completely wrong. And he goes, oh, I'm sorry if people listen to it. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry that you uh, that's a bit took tone the advice deaf, buddy. I gave you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My that's bad. Also, that's what like, forward guidance know. is for, is for yeah. people to make a long-term financial planning decisions. <laughs> you can't go, oh, you listen to the forward guidance? Psych. <laughs> Like, well, and also that's then not good enough. Of like, oi, go back to living in share houses. I don't know. Yeah, like, how great death. was it when you were 20? Like, it was dope, you know. <laughs> he, when did, people, he did say that, didn't he? Yeah, yeah having house yeah. parties and just uh, chucking bottles over the fence into the neighbours. Like, yeah. yeah, which is pretty go back rich. back to the good old days. Pretty rich coming from a guy who has a five-bedroom house worth over $3 million <laughs> oh, <laughs> and makes $911,000 a year. It just, no. it, you know what? It just comes off a little bit disingenuous. I don't know oh. what it is about that. Oh, yeah. But. I'll move into Philip Lowe's share house. Yeah, yeah, let's go. Randwick, I'll rent a room. Lovely. Rent, I love Randwick's Randwick. great. It's great. It's near the beach. There's a cool big park full of dogs. Beautiful. It's awesome. Very nice this time of year. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, so that's Phil Lowe. Fuckity bye. Um, you shall not be missed. Um, uh, Peter Dutton um, took an opportunity to um, get get his uh, head um, on the TV uh, talking about yeah. this as, yeah. as he always does. Um, he asserted that um, that some of the choices that were being floated um, for his replacement um, should not be considered for the role, um, namely uh, Mr. Kennedy and Mrs. Ms. Wilkinson, and because they had established relationships with government in their roles as department bosses quote we will support somebody who is independent and that's an absolutely essential criteria you can't have somebody who is in the pocket of the treasurer or the finance minister mr dutton told channel nine um he must have done that while completely memory holding memory holding his entire time in government where his his government in which he was a front bench cabinet minister was responsible for the jobs for mates scandal in which they gave jobs to their mates yep <laughs> Uh, I guess he just forgot about all of that. So no, I, as I would as humbly they suggest came that out of government, yeah, Peter Dutton swapped to being a completely new Peter Dutton. George. Hello, it is me, like, Guy it's, Incognito. Yeah, it's a completely different Peter Dutton. Opposition Peter Dutton isn't the same Peter Dutton who did all the things that opposition Peter Dutton now says is bad. It is I, Peter Dutton, <laughs> a different well, guy. They, mm. They won the uh, the by election the other day, so uh, oh, in the seat know. of uh, Fadden. Yes, in yeah. Queensland. I yeah, want to say. I don't think anyone like yeah. all the all the projections were that they were going to retain that. That's a thoroughly mm-hmm. liberal stronghold. Um, so I don't think anyone was expecting that. Would have been fantastic if they had have lost it, but I don't think anyone was really anticipating that. Um, mm. but uh, yeah, no, I just thought that was pretty funny, pretty rich, Peter Dutton. Um, oh. Of all people, of all of the people who exist on this planet, uh, to to level that, and then they didn't even choose either of those two people <laughs> that he that he spoke about that had like mm. close ties to the government or whatever, quote unquote. They picked someone entirely independent, so it was like he got outraged over a thing that didn't. It's a completely yeah. fabricated thing that he got upset about. They, it's not like he heard who the choice was and then said, "Oh, that's not acceptable." They've got close ties to the government. He literally just made up a thing to be angry about, which I oh, would well, argue they, is the domain of Sky News. <laughs> no, no, they, they were actually consulted on the choice, which is why he was speaking out about it. So that, yeah, they, they had, they were, they were part of the conversation in selecting the replacement, but obviously the government has the uh, the final say. So, mm. 
but yeah, I mean, you know, that uh, Philip Lowe was the deputy of Glenn Stevens, um, so it sort of seems to be there's a bit of a, a running, um, not to say running joke. I don't know if it's a joke, but <laughs> a running that's pretty tradition. good. That um, wasn't that wasn't a Freudian <laughs> slip, my friend. That was a Freudian <laughs> slide. Uh, I'm not sure who, what, uh, you know, before Glenn Stevens, whether he was a deputy or someone, but you know, maybe we will. Uh, that was the case. Um, yeah, you're not going to get some, um, you know anarchist student collective person, you know, some bomb thrower uh, from, uh, you know, from, uh, you know, student socialists coming and, uh, and, and running the RBA, right? Like Man, it's a pretty, no. of the institutions, it's a pretty institutional one. So uh, could you imagine if they just picked like some, yeah. some absolute, like complete flip of the system yeah. person to be running the, the biggest bank in Australia? All fun. Yeah, just like, you know what? Free housing. <laughs> Why not? I'm the governor now. That's uh you know that's not what the uh you know that's not what the RBA does, sir. I know, but I'm the bank. Oh, Come at me. But, yeah, I think with all the money of the Reserve Bank, I can make that happen. I am the Senate. Uh yeah. I don't know how to transition to the next article, but our next story, mm. though, I'll just I'll just move us into it. Uh move us into one, a new era, if you will. A new era, shall we say. A yes. New, There's a new uh, epoch. There is a, a working group, uh, ladies and gentlemen, a working group called the Anthropocene Working Group uh, that uh, is basically responsible for assessing whether or not we have moved into a new epic. And I don't know how to make that sound cooler than what it actually epoch? is. Epoch. Epoch? Or ep- ep- epoch. I've epoch. always said it. I've always said epoch. I could be completely uh, wrong on that. Now yeah. lost all sense of what that word sounds epoch, like. Yeah. As in epoch. rhymes with Ewok. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was, yeah, epoch. So epoch. we've moved into a new geological epoch. Not yet. Uh, well, but we or, may. Have, we they, may well, isn't the main story That's here the that argument. they voted for a particular lake in Canada? Well, <laughs> probably tells us we have moved into this new it's, epoch. Yeah. Here's the thing, right? So there's a, there's a lot of history behind it, but basically... Back in 2000, there was a scientist who was like, I think we've create, gone to a new epoch uh, because of human uh, human development, basically. Fossil yeah. Industrial revolution. Man, Fossil man fuels and climate change. <clears throat> we have irrevertibly, I can't say that word properly, changed the environment. Irre- 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 irreversibly? Irreversibly? Irrecoverably. Right about now. Irreversibly. Let's do that one. Uh, change the environment so much. Yeah, there we go. There, that's better. <laughs> that, we're in a new epoch. Irrevocably. Um, I did so it. So there's lots of steps to go into this. Okay. Mm. So they've got a working group. Um, and it has to go, once that working group has all their data, they then have to go to the International Congress of Stratigraphy uh, to decide on that. And I, I don't know if I pronounced that word right either. I love that we're, we're allowing This is your Adam, story. Yeah, I love that we're allowing Adam to, to introduce this story because it's full of words that he's clearly taking his first stab at. And I love no, it. I posted the article. Fuck you. I, I know. Just- I read, words. I read, I read the thing, but I don't necessarily have yeah. to say it when I'm yeah, reading. All, I don't read articles all... out loud, Tom. Do you yeah. read things out loud oh, at home by yourself in the, on the bus? It's how I keep my thespian energy. I, um, I uh, actually yeah. scream all the articles I read into my wife's <laughs> open mouth, and that's how I know she's heard them. <laughs> Your baby is going to just come out saying, "Eviscerate the proletariat." <laughs> <laughs> The proletariat. Oh no! <laughs> bad baby, <No>. bad. <laughs> so yeah, what they're saying is this new era, the Anthropocene, which basically is Anthro, so man, seen as you know era or whatever. Um, anthro uh, meaning 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 yeah, man, man, Anthro, right? Anthropomorphic, yeah. and then seen means a scene that we fucked up the world. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I seen mm, it. Mm. Uh, we're currently in the Holocene, which started about 11,700 years ago when the oh, world yeah. started warming up after the last Ice Age. People, the, the official line is that we are still in that era, uh, sorry, epoch, uh, but uh, yeah, the, the, this working group is trying to say that yeah. no, we've moved into a new one. Now, 
there are, and the way you do this is you have to go to sites and you have to look at all the, you take cores out of the ground. So whether that be an ice core from Antarctica or you drill down into the ground and you yeah, pull out something. It's, a, it's sort of like a big cylinder of, of dirt yeah. or material that you're sort of pulling out of the ground and then you can sort of count the different layers and or, yeah. you know, what, what materials are stored, stored in each layer and you can sort of date mm. particular layers to particular years based on what was going on in the world. Like, you know, they can trace particular you know go this the year must have been 1940 whatever because we can see that there's you know nuclear you know radioactive material in this layer and so we know yep. that this layer is this particular year because that happened when this nuclear test happened that sort of thing so yeah and this has got you know yeah. more uh there's, there's less pollen in the soil because there was a bushfire like that year and we can correlate the event of that year to when that happened mm -hmm. so there are various sites in the world that are better at this than others and one of the sites they're looking at is this place called crawford lake in canada um so they're going to go there and they're going to do their, their testing uh, and they're going to report back and then at some point um, in the next couple of months uh we should know whether or not we have in fact moved mm. to a new epoch which is kind of fucking yes, terrifying if you think I, about it yes because i understand like uh with with apologies to our dear friend kenneth who's a geologist oh he's probably just I've, screaming like, into his wife's spoken, open mouth as we yeah, read this <laughs> I've, i have like spoken to him on many occasions just about geological things and i have found it quite interesting but i've clearly retained none of it mm. but i imagine that a geological epoch is not supposed to change often because it involves rocks and rocks of their own accord don't change much quickly. Like when it says the current epoch that we're in started approximately 11,000 years ago, mm. I'm imagining this is a young epoch. Like, you know, for fucking the earth to change from the molten piece of shit that it was at the start of time to now was billions of years. I'm yeah. assuming you're not supposed to change epochs in like 10,000. Yeah, yeah, the, the like, period of the dinosaurs was like hundreds of millions of years. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah it's, <laughs> like, it's like changing the gears without putting your foot on the clutch. You're just, you're just yanking it where it's not supposed yeah. to go. Um, terrible analogy, but you get the idea. So uh, the yeah, there's a and there's also an international geological congress uh, that is in August of next year. So that that's basically when mm. they're going to make the uh, the final thumbs up or thumbs down. Yeah, and I um, yeah. I guess the, to give an idea of to why this is terrible, I feel a a US historian uh, is quoted in this article uh, as calling the you know post World War II period the Great Acceleration. <laughs> Yeah, it's not um, good. Yeah, it's not good that we have uh, somehow, well, potentially, again, you know, this nerd convention needs to decide whether or not it's happened, mm. but that we as humans have just turned, you know, a hundred, like uh, hundreds of millions of years worth of geological development into a cool century yes. from burning all the stuff. Less than a century, uh, Tom. That's fine. Don't worry about it. Oh, yeah, great. Totally fine. Totally fine. Yeah, um, future generations will thank us. It's uh, Crawford Lake's actually right near Niagara Falls. So there it's, you go. Uh, yeah, it's just northwest oh. of there. So, yeah. Um, and the reason that <clears throat> well, something I thought was interesting about this article um, that will, of course, link in the show notes is that it talks about why lakes are uniquely suited to this kind of scientific endeavor. And it's pretty interesting. It's You've got to have a lake that doesn't have – um, water flowing into it or flowing out of it. So it's got to be sort of a static lake. It's got to be quite deep. But essentially what that allows you to do is you have particles and various things sort of fall into the lake. They fall down to the bottom. It's got to be quite a deep lake. So that bottom layer of water doesn't sort of really interact with the top layers of water that move around. Yeah. And then it sort of settles and it doesn't go anywhere because it stays wet. It stays intact. So it's like a very specific set of circumstances that need to come about in order mm. to identify sites like this. Um, but yeah, lakes sort of of this type are particularly well suited to to this kind of endeavor. Um, and other other sites are like, you know, places in, in Antarctica and, and things like that where they, you know, famous for sort of drilling ice cores and, and things like that. Mm. But, mm. And Antarctica is going great. I think it was... Uh, I saw some weird random stat recently that Antarctica's lost approximately WA worth of ice recently. One Western Australia, please. Yeah. 
WA is a big place for mm. anyone who's not from Australia. It's pretty fucking large. So. No, it's a shame, <laughs> Tom, especially when you consider all the mining and minerals that we could have extracted from that uh, if mm. it was still mm. around. You know. Yeah, yeah, that that giant uh, ice sheet was just full of fifty dollar bills, just you thick with minerals. right out of the ground. Just well, stick with ice at least. I could use some yeah. ice. Mm, mm, yeah, Oops, some ice. Some you can ice. just pop up, to, pop up to Shepparton. The ice capital of Australia. What's uh, what? I don't I, understand. I think that. so. Uh, meth. I'm talking about meth. Oh, oh, ice. 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 You know. <laughs> you know. Uh, the other other ice. Uh, um, I thought. Yeah, yeah. Well, you see, I would have gone like a Ben Cousins reference or something like that. Ah, um, so. uh, yeah. see, now the the Shepherd the Shepherdton reference is dear to me because <laughs> my grandparents lived in Shepherdton. So mm. for my entire life Shepherdton was like a giant retirement village which was yep. all nice and quiet and would visit them for Christmas or whatever. And then I moved to Melbourne for university and people are like, "Oh no, I went out clubbing in Shepherdton and there's like sniffer dogs." <laughs> like it's oh, wow. just all of meth. Oh, <laughs> I was okay. like, "Oh, Oh, okay. That's a whole side to Shepparton that I never saw. Well, it's um, yeah, it keeps them keeps them young, keeps them vibrant. Mm. I'm assuming the old people are the ones doing the methamphetamines and partying. <laughs> well, I mean, of course, because as far as they I don't was have aware, any teeth. What do they it care? Was only, yeah, it was only old people in Shepparton whenever I was there. Um, um, speaking yeah, of uh, old people, meth. <laughs> <laughs> speaking of old people, Fran Drescher. Um, <laughs> so you might you might remember She's not old. She's old-ish, older than when we I, saw her. Well, well I, I don't know. I have not looked up French Drescher's age, but I wouldn't consider her a really old person. Anyway. She's no longer 25 on a 90s sitcom. So, exactly. Yeah. So Hooray. you might you might remember Fran Drescher from her role as the nanny in- uh, the, the nanny. The, the titular nanny in The Nanny. Um, Hello. And Mr. Sheffield, um, we're going to murder the bourgeoisie. <laughs> Um, so she she has taken a slightly different um, yeah, incarnation now as um, she's actually SAG AFRA's uh, president. Um, SAG, and, the Screen Actors Guild. Yes, and and yeah, she was uh, very outspoken this week about didn't know Fran Drescher was going to be the uh, <laughs> the uh, the hero of the proletariat we- that we all needed. But uh, there you go. Um, so she was out there um, accusing streamers and studios of. Uh, greed in their negotiations, uh, and they've since announced a strike. So um, he is joining the writers. Uh, yeah, joining the writers who are who are also striking at the moment. The uh, I believe it's WGA, the Writers Guild of America. Yeah, yeah, they've been striking like. for like seventy-two days. I know because uh, it means I haven't been able to get any Colbert for a couple of months now. So mm-hmm. um, sorted out, guys. Anyway, here's Fran Drescher um, talking about the studios and their unwillingness to negotiate. We are the victims here. We are being victimized by a very greedy entity. I am shocked by the way the people that we have been in business with are treating us. I cannot believe it, quite frankly. How far apart we are on so many things. How they plead poverty that they're losing money left and right when giving hundreds of millions of dollars to their CEOs. The entire business model has been changed by streaming, digital, AI. This is a moment of history that is a moment of truth. If we don't stand tall right now, we are all going to be in trouble. We are all going to be in jeopardy of being replaced by machines. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I it yeah. it's pretty bananas. Like yeah, like sort of the the kinds of things that they uh, that, that the studios have been saying in uh, the lead up to this because I think it might have been just before the uh, the actors union joined the writers' strike, but when. Uh, reports were coming out from uh, representatives of the uh, the studios like Disney, Netflix, all that sort of stuff, said the quiet part very loud where they were like, yeah, we're just not going to negotiate with them. We'll wait till like, I don't know, October, because mm. by then they're going to start becoming homeless after having no work for six months. And yeah, then we can just uh, fucking bend them over a barrel. Eh? I, I, I believe and- the, the term that they used was um, a, a very, a very cold winter. 
basically using yeah. the idea that writers and you know various starve them out would literally starve them out and yeah. you know wait till the middle of winter <laughs> to to negotiate because they might be potentially homeless by then like yeah it's pretty it's disgusting just dark. that's just dark as fuck um yeah. but of course it just made them rally harder like the amount of writers i've seen since then being like we're always poor you think you can threaten us with poorness like no we're gonna fight harder you pricks you idiot i've been living in a four bedroom 20 person household which is a six floor walk up as i haven't had heating since 2016 what do you mean yeah yeah you can't make me any you can't kill me it's gonna be me keith richards and a bunch of cockroaches left at the end of the universe i i don't know though throughout this whole um the whole this this whole thing. I actually don't know how writers or how much they get paid per like script or whatever that they they do. I know that they um what they're trying to do with their proposal is you know in, in the aggregate they're looking at about like four hundred twenty nine million a year. Um, or one CEO. <laughs> yeah. Or one CEO. Yeah, one Bob um, Iger. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Whereas the the person the the the, the organisation that they are uh, both both the SAG guys and the writers are up against is the alliance of motion picture and television producers um so they're the people they're trying to reach the deal with but whenever um, you're on the side where the other side is saying let's just starve them out (laughs) like you're probably on the the right side (laughs) like in terms of the writer you know it's not it's not the movie studios being like you know, the writers saying internally, like, man, we just got to wait till these movie studios get starved the fuck out and then they'll be on the streets and we'll be able to negotiate with Bob Iger when he's living in a tent under an overpass. It's like, if you, if that side is clearly the bad, the movie studio side is clearly the bad side, right? Like, I don't need to know too much about mm. the specifics. Mm. So, you know, exactly. guess, How much does Bob Iger earn for comparison? Uh, like, it was something like $425 million, Yeah, I there think. you go. Like Literally, yeah. $4 yeah. Million so, million something like, you know, nearly half a bill. Um, but yeah, so no, Adam, sorry, I, I assumed where you were going with that was sort of like what, well, what the deal mean? that the producers have offered is 86 million in terms yeah, of, yeah. so uh, I, uh, have you tried uh, going and fucking yourself? <laughs> yeah, my, my, yeah, my core understanding of sort of all this, cause I haven't looked at it in terms of the, um, like the literal dollar figure that will make people happy or not, but it's more just the system yeah. as it works. Cause my understanding prior to things like. Netflix and Disney Plus and all the streaming y sort of stuff, when it was just TV channels, there was a thing of uh, not only you'd get paid X amount to uh, act in your thing or to have written a script for a project, but then whenever it aired, there was also a residual payment that would also come out. It's like, it's like um, uh, for, for when you do work in ads. Mm, here in Australia, yeah. like, you know, you you act in an ad and then uh, you get paid, whatever. But every time that company wants to rerun that ad campaign, yeah. they owe you something. Um, so that was essentially sort of how it worked. And I've seen some writers on Twitter talk about, like, you know, when they were writing for, like, I don't know, the NCIS or whatever in the 90s, it might be like every time a season's rerun or something that they wrote on, it's like $13,000 or something they get. So like, you know, a, yeah. a decent, uh, you know, decent chunk of change. Uh, I, oh, I don't know if that's a decent chunk of change for a Hollywood writer or whatever, but it, better than what they're getting now when some other ones were like, uh, I think a recent example was one of the writers for the Disney plus show, she Hulk mm. uh, attorney at law. Um, they got like $400 in a mm. residual check for that because really, an episode being watched on Disney Plus essentially re-aired, quote unquote, if you're watching it on repeat, mm. but that's not how the contracts work or anything. Like, you know, it's where the technology is outpaced the legislation or the agreements in I, the I would have union. thought it would be like, you know, like you do it in batch things. So like, you know, the, the the license to have it on Netflix is six months. And if they renew that license and everyone gets a new set of residuals. Well, it's different period, with- that's Disney what you. That's what you'd think, right? Well, I guess that's what they're arguing for, right? Because that's like yeah. that's not how. I don't know if that's specifically what they're arguing for, but like that's not currently how it works. But yeah, yeah like right. I'm sorry, as George, you were saying, they're like Disney made She Hulk, so they own and it in owns perpetuity, the right. Yes, exactly. right. They they have that yeah, show in perpetuity. Yeah. Like you know, that's not going to then get contracted out to 
to Netflix or anywhere no, else. Like, you yes, know, those man. rights aren't going to lapse and then get picked up by another place. Like, mm-hmm. Disney owns it. If Disney pulls She-Hulk from their platform, it just goes into a cupboard. Gone. Right? Yeah. There's no Blu-rays. There's no DVDs. There's no nothing. It's gone. Like, they I... can er- like, that's another conversation of how they can just erase art from history like you know they can just take away access to anything and have it just vanish like they cancelled a series that only just premiered or like a movie that came out in may they've already pulled it from disney plus so it's just gone yeah because they don't want to pay those residuals right (laughs) and whatever what residuals would be the argument that's for the writers and the actors Mm. right um but yeah so so prior to this in the 2007 2008 writers guild of America strike. There was some talk about streaming rights, but obviously streaming was not as big in 2008. Netflix as, didn't come was, to Australia until 2015. Still. Yeah. yeah, we didn't get Netflix till 2015 or so, whatever. Right? So there was some discussion about this, but it was kind of left on the table. And I think because the preference was, you know, to get money from terrestrial television, it seems like they kind of left the streaming rights on the table. To the extent to which that now, you know, as Tom said, you might be a writer on a TV series, um, which is largely streaming. The way people access it is all streaming, but the streaming rights yeah. are kind of like nothing. And I believe that because that's that follows a trend that we've seen elsewhere in digital subscription land, like with Spotify, like with, you know, Apple Music Plus, like with various other content, you know, um, Kindle via Amazon. It follows the trend that we've seen with other similar kinds of services where the 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 residuals the royalties that you get from streamed digital content are just nowhere near what the what what yeah. they used to be so the sheer quantity of streams that it would take to get to similar figures are just impossible oh i remember hearing stories <laughs> yeah. about like famous artists on spotify being like the number one artist in australia you know that month or that year being like yeah um my song got played a couple million times. That's great. Mm-hmm. I earned about 400 bucks from that. Like it literally like does not yeah. pay my bills in order to make money. I need to go touring. Mm. Otherwise I literally yeah. can't yeah. like feed my family. Uh, whereas it's... before CD sales were like a massive component. When we were growing yeah. up, you go to a store, um, you buy a CD, you pay whatever, $25, $30 mm-hmm. for that CD. And a couple of bucks from that CD would go to that artist. So you'd also get radio plays. You'd also get touring. But like the, the thing was the media, the exchange is you give me the content and I give you money. And that meant even if you had some dodgy recording studio who was stealing nine-tenths of the value, you still got, if you sell a million albums, you're a millionaire at the end of the day there, right? That's not the case anymore with music. Um, mm. And the same thing is happening to, to to writers and any other kind of content producers and, and stuff as well. Mm. Um, but what blows my mind is just the complete callousness, like, like Fran Drescher was saying, Um, the complete callousness with which they treat people that they share an industry with. Like, say you reach an agreement, you're going to have to work with writers again. Like, you have to look across from these people Mm -hmm. and deal with them again at some point. It doesn't make sense to completely have a winner takes all. Yeah, to be so hostile, to say we get everything and you get nothing. Like, like Mm -hmm. part of the deal that was um, proposed um, uh, around uh, the... uh, 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 AMPTP. I'm not sure what that stands. Oh, the, uh, the Alliance. Uh, so that's the, yeah, that's yeah. the bad guys. That's the Empire Alliance of Motion Picture <laughs> and Television Producers, or AMPTP. Um, uh, said that its proposal included a groundbreaking AI proposal that protects actors' digital likenesses for SAG after members. Um, but uh, <laughs> this uh, Duncan Crabtree Ireland, who SAG after Aftra's chief negotiator said that this groundbreaking proposal that they've that they've just mentioned, uh, what a what, quote groundbreaking, groundbreaking AI say, proposal. Yeah. What a gra- so groundbreaking. Here's the detail: the, the way he characterized it is basically you as an extra show up to set, okay, for one day. You get scanned into a fucking AI machine, and then they own your likeness for everything, anywhere, in in all of perpetuity for the rest of time. So you get one mm. day's worth of pay to come and show up as an extra, and then you're just going to get like digitally inserted into Thor twelve. This time it's Thor <laughs> well, And but that what what without getting uh, any payment. What's a little scary around that is that that's already happening kind of in a way. Like this is a bit anecdotal, but um, like yeah, my partner met someone who was in a 
Marvel movie mm. and part of the contract terms was, and it wasn't, I don't think they were a background character. They were kind of a bit more prominent sort of mm. thing. But um, from what I understood, it was part of the contract that they argued against. So I don't know if it ended up happening, mm. but was that they would get body scanned to get like digital likeness sort of thing. Like where for one on one standpoint, all right, there's motion capture and things like that. If you're doing for like a specific for, thing. For, for visual effects and things like that. But I think also the way the contract kind of was working was more that and we can use your likeness as this character whenever we want. Mm. Like, so, you know, in Thor 12, if you needed to just have, oh, look, it's fucking blop to blop in the background there. Yeah. You didn't have to get them in that day. We have a digital copy of them. Like, you know, we're not at the point where you can just uh, like that Al Pacino movie, Simone, from fucking 20 years ago. You can't just have a complete an actor who doesn't exist yet. But yeah, if you just need background Getting population close. of fucking. Yeah, if you just need like Loki to show up in the background of a shot. But if also, they have a digital likeness of Tom Hiddleston, just, they yeah. could do it, right? But but, but the also, version like, of Mark Hamill. Yeah, so they're already doing them, it. What's to prevent them from just making an amalgam of a thousand different people that's a brand new person that doesn't have any sort of digital rights that they can just. Have you, you, know have what you I seen mean? Simone? Like, have you seen Simone? No. This movie from 20 years ago? Yeah, it's about like. Oh, they, I remember that. Yeah. They make a fake actress, like co- yeah. with computers. So there's an actress that is in movies that no one's ever met. And she wins Oscars and stuff, and she's not real. And yeah, and this was like the early 2000s. And, yeah, and here her we are. name is Margot Robbie. <laughs> <laughs> Margot um, Robbie's definitely real, isn't she? No, Margot Robbie's too beautiful. She's definitely AI generated. Have you ever seen she's, Margot Robbie she, in a room? She's no, real. have you ever seen Margot Robbie talking <laughs> while Leonardo <laughs> DiCaprio is drinking? I don't think so. <laughs> um, so. Uh, yeah, it, I don't. It's it's just grotesque, and it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's really and, terrifying. And, that, and they've they've argued the the AMPTP has has said that those claims are misleading and, and all that sort of stuff. But I absolutely believe that they're like oh, they're groundbreaking. Do it. I, I believe they would do it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I believe that their solution to this problem is that you get one day's worth of pay and we get your likeness forever. I absolutely believe mm. that is something that they would try yeah, on. Yeah, we, we get a copy, a copy of you that we can just puppeteer. Like, of course they would do that, like 100%. And it's one of those things of, you know, fucking legalese allows like you know dep- depending on ways in which it's interpreted can allow you to do certain things right so of course they that might not have been their intention mm. with this deal but it, it, if the if the legal language is amb- amb- ambiguous enough oh of I've, course they'd try it i like i've definitely signed contracts working as an actor where it's like yeah we own this it's in all perpetuity, perpetuity yeah. in all universes, foreign and domestic, in any form, in any, you know, like yeah. all that sort of stuff. So I, I have no trouble believing that they would try and extend mm. it to this. The thing that that really um, bothers me about the response to this is that people's analysis has been so dreadfully shallow. They see that like, you know, Killian Murphy and Matt Damon. Oh, Matt Damon's and, like complaining for fair pay. Yeah, and, and they're like, oh, like, Matt oh, Damon's oh, rich Matt though. Damon. I Matt saw Matt Damon. Damon lives in a big house. So yeah. Matt Damon doesn't need any more money. Hollywood people are so rich. They yeah, don't need oh, more money. Yeah, because obviously Matt Damon is working on SAG day rates. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, millionaire actors are asking for fair wages. Give me a break. It's like that's. A, that's not what it's the shallowest. It's the shall. Thing. You haven't even thought yeah. about it for more than two seconds because if you mm. had, in the time it's taken you to type out this dumb fucking comment with your thumbs on this Instagram story, you would have, if you'd taken a fraction of that amount of time to think about it, you would realize Matt Damon's not doing it for Matt Damon. Matt Damon's a fucking millionaire. Every movie that he goes to, he gets millions of dollars yeah. because he's an, a famous actor and can negotiate one on one his own contracts. He's not striking for Matt Damon, they're striking for all of the the 99.999% of other actors who aren't Matt Damon, who get paid fucking day rates and make 20 grand a year if they're lucky, living off residuals and can't afford fucking healthcare. That's the people that they're striking um, for, you fucking... Yeah, there's some some stat that I've seen, uh, like, you know, members of SAG and all that when they're trying to respond to those claims of like, you know, oh, you're all millionaires. They're like, actually, around 95% is the number they've thrown around uh, of SAG members cannot 
earn a living entirely acting. Right. <laughs> like I don't know if you. Ninety five percent of the actors guild cannot act for <laughs> for a living. Like people, that's how people bad being that like, is. like yeah. uh, all the actors I know are famous, and it's like yeah, that's the point. Numb nuts is that most of the actors that exist aren't famous because you don't know them. Yeah. And um, it was interesting hearing like actors who you would assume were probably quite the the, the well off kind uh, who would be able to just like oh yeah you can't starve us out fuck you I'm Matt Damon or whatever mm. but I think um people have dug up a quote from uh, I think it was a year ago that she said this but um Sydney Sweeney uh, said like I couldn't not work for six months mm. like in term like in terms of financing like mm. and she'd been in like a couple seasons of Euphoria at that point and the White Lotus like and-, and White Lotus and all that sort of stuff like yeah, you know she's stuff. she's a big deal at the moment and she's like yeah I couldn't just take six months off like we're not fucking billionaires like yeah it's it's insane and but, yeah and, and that's is- someone who's on television who's a working actor whose name you and I both know right so think about you know people think that like actors are just like the Brad Pitt and Matthew McConaughey, there's like 12 actors in the world and we all know exactly. No, it's like, no, dude, those are the A-list actors that everyone knows. Most mm. actors are fucking shit ass poor trying to make it. Like all of those films you see about like an actor trying to make it in Hollywood and eventually a star is born. They become an A-list actor at the end of the day. That's not most yeah. actors. Most actors never have that last third act where they become famous. They just stay poor forever. <laughs> Yeah, and and it's just also that thing of like, yeah, that uh, in any industry, making it should never be you have to be making Matthew McConaughey money. Yes. Like it shouldn't that shouldn't be the benchmark. Yeah, I like, reckon you know, teachers every, should every only is like te- yeah, teachers should only actor. get paid if they're, um, you know, fucking. What was that famous teacher? Yes, if the student becomes a Nobel laureate. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There we go. That's it. Mm. Yeah, That's like fine. the benchmark, like because we always talk about like whether actors make it or not. It's like, yeah, that we only consider an actor has made it as like being a working actor if they're pulling twenty million per movie, like they're Will Smith. Where it's like, no, no, like there should be actors who live on just like regular person money. Like that should just be a thing. You should be able to be a regular. You should just person be able to have a life. And an actor. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you should like you know like yes, there's the A listers and whatever, but like yeah, it's the fact that ninety five percent of membership of the Screen Actors Guild also probably have to be doing something else. I was reaching for <laughs> the name of Robin Williams's character in the Dead Poet Society, the teacher that everyone loved, but I can't remember his name. Oh, Captain, my Captain. Yeah, that guy. Robin. Yeah. Just call him Rob. Rob oh, Williams. This dog. Old Robbie, yeah. Robbie Robin Williams. Yeah, mm. Robbie Wilboy, a Zelda fan. Um, so, uh, yeah, yeah it's, mm. yeah, it's it's just crazy and fucked, and just yeah, I seeing mean, how there's, everyone's there's, there's another, about this. There's another aspect to the whole equation, which is that you know there's an oversupply of labour and an undersupply of actual work as well, which is what exacerbates the problem. But I guess it also is what... Because it's an industry that everyone wants to be in. There's so many people yeah. that want to be actors and they want to be famous and they want to perform and then have it yeah. in their hearts to perform. Like, I understand we've all been that person. We, 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 all, we all did that. Right? That's, like, that's I get nothing. it. Yeah. But but there's, there is... You know, if you're if you're a working actor, it's like anything. If you're a working actor, where you're hmm. someone who's consistently getting gigs, you should be able to have a reasonable middle yeah. class life, like yeah. everyone else. Like driving, if you a cab, are walking, like if you're working doing forty hours a week yeah. acting, yeah, <laughs> like that yeah. should be your job, right? Yeah, um, yeah. and, and if you don't like it, honest. if you don't like it. Stop watching four hours of Netflix at the end of every fucking day. You know what I yeah. mean? Like all these people saying, like, oh, acting's not a real job. Go get a real fucking job. It's like, mate, the call times are fucking 5 a.m. It's annoying. Yeah, you got to drive yourself there. It's a sh- it is shit annoying hard work. It's not fun. <laughs> and, mm-hmm. and, and it's like, and, and if you really think that what they do is worthless and doesn't contribute anything to society, Stop watching movies. Stop playing video games. Stop stop watching TV every single fucking night. Like, if you don't like, mm. if you don't value what they do, why are you consuming it constantly? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, it's like, uh, that's always the argument we gave to our governments, right? When it's all like, why aren't you funding the arts? It's like, this is important because literally everyone consumes everyone constantly. the product of that. Hours, hours and hours most a night. people shooting themselves. <laughs> like, that, you know, I got to watch my stories so as I don't go crazy. Next to farmers and toilet paper 
like yeah. toilet paper yeah. manufacturers, they're probably the people that contribute most to the the products that we it's consume on a day to day basis. Yeah, yeah. It's just nuts. Also, can I just flag in all of this how fucking dope the cast of Oppenheimer are? That yeah. they were like, because the UK premiere of Oppenheimer was happening uh, around the time that the announcement was going to come out, whether or not the Screen Actors Guild was going to strike. Mm. And so while there was organizing of like, they moved the premiere like to an hour earlier so mm. the red carpet could happen before that decision came oh, through. They got, they got to get, the, get your picks. But all the, actors, but all the actors were like, if the announcement comes through while we're in the middle of the red carpet, the moment the announcement comes through, we walk. Mm. And, like, at a certain point, they did. I don't know if it happened, like, during the middle of the halfway, red Halfway through the film. Um, but, so, yeah, they, it happened, and then they got up and left, and Christopher Nolan did an announcement being like, yeah, the cast aren't here anymore because they're fighting for fair wages and mm. good on them, too. Mm. And, like, yeah, because, again, Chris Nolan's a member of, of the, the Writers, Writers Guild. Guild. Yeah. He's... He wouldn't be making these claims for old Chris Nolan. Chris Nolan's one of the probably the most highest paid writers, directors in the fucking world. Yeah, Chris Nolan's a millionaire. Doing it He's fine. Because it's the right thing to fucking do. Yeah. And yeah, so good on everyone involved. I would have just loved the idea that Killian Murphy, who's been on like record being like, I hate doing the press sort of stuff. Like, why do I have to be a personality? Why well, Matt Damon's doing all the press actor. for Oppenheimer. <laughs> yeah, like every interview I've seen with Killian Murphy, he's like, he's being lovely, but he's just like, yeah, like I just do my job and my work. Like I, I find it weird. Why do I have to be an interesting person for you? Like I just do acting and stuff. So him being in the middle, being like incredibly Irish, and then the announcement comes through and he just walks Yeet. out of an interview. <laughs> I would have loved to have seen that if that was how it had gone down, but sadly, no. Um, yeah. Are we all excited for Barbenheimer this week? Have we talked about this on the show? So the Barbie movie and the Oppenheimer movie are coming out on the same day. Yeah. Some people are planning on doing double features, otherwise known as Barbenheimer. Yes. Uh, sadly, I won't be doing the exact Barbenheimer. I haven't got them planned for the same day. But we'll see them both in the same week, though. So I'll, I'll, I'll take that. But yeah, Barbenheimer... Not since Doom Eternal and uh, Animal Crossing on Switch came out on the same day <laughs> has there been such an amazing pairing of things. Mwah. D- Doom Crossing. Yeah, I, I Animal will not Eternal. See the Barbie <laughs> film. Uh, but, you know, I understand people are it excited looks for it. awesome. Are you Gre- kidding Gre- me? Greta Gerwig is no, great no. as a director. So, and and, and Ryan she- Gosling is I like funny. Ryan Gosling. When you I, let him do a comedy, he's so funny. I, I'm again. I'm not persuaded that Margot Robbie is a real person, but I, I do enjoy the AI generated character that is Margot Robbie. He is a real person. Uh, I'm also just no. there for all the the visual effects. Like to nerd out for a second before we move on to more news stuff. You seen that shot in the trailer where she steps out of her high heels and still has the Barbie feet? Uh, that was that was a hundred percent for the foot fetishists. <laughs> but like how but she still Quint- has Quentin her... Tarantino was just. Yeah. Just shooting ropes looking at that. But yeah, just that amazing shot of just stepping out and having it look like her feet are still shaped like a Barbie doll has. Foot. Yeah. Do you know how they did it? Uh, no. I assume she was like holding on to something. Correct. Because yeah. like I was looking at it being like, oh, is that like some kind of fucking like shoe replacement or like <laughs> sticky things or whatever? And then I saw Margot Robbie talking so about it being like, elevated. no, I was determined for it to be like my real feet. I don't like other people like being hand models or whatever for me. So they put sticky stuff on the underside of her heel so that it would stop at that point. And then she could take her shoes out of it. And she's holding a bar off camera and I think does dance stuff. So she was able to pose like that. And I was like, that's so fucking simple. And I love it. I love movies when they do shit like that. Practical and, effects. And you know what, Tom? A bunch of um, senior FX artists um, didn't get credits on the movie as a result of that. So, you know, jobs are I mean, gross. rude, but it, did they did they do the effects? Well, or they could have made they would have made up. they could have made some fake feet for her. That's what I'm saying. She did some I mean, people out of true. a job by doing practical that's effects. True. Yeah, they could have, but I don't know. Practical effects are great. So, uh, yeah, Oppenheimer will actually have to detonate a nuclear bomb in camera. To, I think, <laughs> that's the only way. <laughs> that level of practical kind of stuff. Oh, look, it, I, don't, it, I don't see Killian Murphy standing in perfect heels, feet without shoes on. So. Um, although there are, some people would pay equal amounts of money to see that. <laughs> along I, with mean, Robbie. I mean, that's um, very true. I uh, look, given that it is a Christopher Nolan film, um, I wouldn't 
put it past him to actually detonate well, a, a nuclear bomb in the New Mexico desert. I think he, I, 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 think, I think he considered there was a there was a brainstorm going on for sure <laughs> where they floated that idea. They're like, guys, People what have- if we actually can we? I'm just, put, I'm just spitballing here, but could we actually detonate a nuke or I've, would that be I've crazy? Seen a, I've seen a clip go around. People have asked him. They were like, what's your response to people saying like, oh, Christopher Nolan loves practical effects that yeah, I bet he detonated a nuclear bomb for, for Oppenheimer. And he said, well, obviously I'm flattered that people think that I like would do something so crazy for my practical effects. But also that's kind of terrifying that they think I'd do that. That, that it's, like, like plausible? It like, yeah, that people think that that would be possible. I noticed he you did didn't say, deny the claim, Christopher. He, <laughs> he did say he did say a while ago, and people who don't know the difference between visual effect and CGI took this quote and ran with it, but they said that it was the, the, the detonation of the Trinity test, spoilers for history, but when they first detonate the nuclear bomb in the Manhattan Project. Spoilers, the Nazis um, didn't win. <laughs> Um, yeah, that when they shot that, all of that was done practically. They were, like, done in camera. Mm. So everyone was like, he detonated a nuke! And it's like, no, it just means they didn't use computer-generated imagery to do it. You can do practical effects that still fake yeah. shit, you moron. Like that, <laughs> uh, the shockwave and stuff would have been, like, wind or something. Probably they've, like... Oh, well, yeah, and you can be, or like... Or just a small explosion. like Small explosions, you can background project shit, you can do all this kind of stuff. Like, yeah, it's... Yeah, I don't know. Just it was clearly, like, a bit of bait for people who were like, and it wasn't done with a computer, which means it had to be real. I'm pretty sure the shark in Jaws was real because they said they didn't do it with CGI. So uh, basically yeah. a real shark. That shark was real. His name's Bruce. What do you mean? It's it's, it's real as it is. There is a large robot shark at at, uh, Paramount Studios that you can go and hang out with. Yeah, no, I know. That's what I'm saying. And they used it in the movie and its name was Bruce. It was named after- Oh, I didn't know his name was Bruce. It was named after Steven Spielberg's lawyer. That's funny. Um, (laughs) Because he's a lawyer and he's a shark. I get it. He's a shark. Yeah, yeah, no, it's a physical- um, Yeah, it is is a large physical robot that Mm. they made that. Yeah. Still looks fake. (laughs) It's, it still looks fake as fuck. <laughs> you see it up close in person. You're like, how, yeah, did anyone, how is anyone scared of this? This is crazy. I love watching Jaws because it was the 70s. Um, the I, 70s. I, I, love, I love watching Jaws because like, it's made in so amazingly to be so tense and to, to age so well because so much of it's hidden until like the climax when the shark is actually there chomping on people and like yeah the shark looks fake <laughs> the 70s tom that that was revolutionary okay so it was yeah yeah, yeah. i'm envious of my dad he saw it in the cinema so I my imagine, dad is my yeah. dad is still scared of alien and jaws that was the, that were the two films that terrified him as a child or two, as an adolescent two absolutely terrifying movies your dad has mm. good taste scared um, of all the right things Speaking, Speaking of terrifying. Yes. <laughs> Italy. <laughs> Italy. Italy. <laughs> so I'm going to do you guys a favor and tell this story um, because I can do the spicy meatball Italian accent. Um, is the accent necessary? <laughs> uh, no, it's not necessary, but it is called for. So um, it, one Italian really judge. <laughs> got to make it, got to make it comedy. An Italian judge has provoked um, outrage after handing down a spicy meatball. <laughs> Um, clearing a school uh, caretaker of sexually assaulting a teenage girl because the grope lasted only, quote, a handful of seconds, unquote. Fuck, I only just clocked then how bad, like, not only the the logic of it was only uh, a matter of seconds, so therefore not a crime, but the use of the word handful in that decision is <laughs> oh, no. a horrific oh, choice. No. Yeah, that's like, bad. That didn't click with me when I first read this article, but now hearing it again, I'm like, oh, Oh God! That like you just somehow made the worst sentence worse, Judge. So, um, yeah, a seventeen-year-old student at a school in Rome complained of being groped by uh, the school caretaker as she walked up a staircase with a friend in April of 2022. She said her trousers had fallen down from her waist and she was pulling them up. Uh, and as she was pulling them up, she felt a pair of hands touching her buttocks before the man grabbed her underwear and lifted her up by about an inch. So it sounded like he groped her and then like gave her a, a, an atomic wedgie, a wedgie or something. That's what no, it sounds I think sounds he lifted like. the undies and then lifted her up by an inch. So it's almost like he's 
I don't know. I can't imagine how that works in reality, but he's I frankly don't to want to. Her that sounds yeah. horrific. She says that when she turned around, the caretaker brushed off the grope saying, quote, love, you know, I was joking. Um, I personally love it when caretakers. <laughs> Not student. I was going to say just joke or interact with students at all. <laughs> as, as though that's their job. That's we talk about student if, uh, if the school gardener. Yeah, it just came up and felt felt my ball bag and be like, stop being such a queer about it, George. <laughs> it's just fucking. Oh, it's a horrific. joke. No homo. I said no and, homo. It's a joke. And the, by the um, way, your balls feel fantastic. Yeah, and the um the the response to this has been interesting because you know the in the judge's ruling, uh, they ruled that uh that the incident lasted between five and ten seconds and was therefore too fleeting to be considered a crime. Um, so people have been replying, being like, "Okay, here's how long ten seconds is. Long time. Like, like, yeah, it, it's it's long enough, I think. So it, it's yeah. So there's been videos people so, have been doing. So the there's timing. been a yeah, so there's been a trend where people are like yeah. counting down ten seconds and either like groping themselves on the tits or or having a you know having someone else do a it. partner or or someone they know you know yeah. grope them for ten seconds, um and it's yeah it's been like, trending yeah, on TikTok in in Italy. It's like that's ten seconds is a real long time. Like it is not okay for anyone to touch you for one second with uh, non consensually, let alone ten seconds. Um, but. Yeah, it's- just absolutely horrific. But I'd like to think, can we now use this as precedent for just, like, lots of other crimes in Italy? Because if it's, like, it was only five to ten seconds... Hey, don't worry whatever, about it. Like, I only robbed the bank for ten seconds. Like, don't worry yeah, about but, but it. That, but that's a fleeting amount of time, so therefore there was probably no suffering to the victim, so it can't be, con- con- you know, considered a crime. So can I just shoot a guy in the back of the head? He would have hey, died. He instantly. only died that's for three a- seconds. Fraction of time. Like, you know, he barely suffered for even one second, let alone ten. So, yeah, would, not wouldn't be that considered analogy a crime? be more like right? if you shot him but then brought him back to life with CPR or whatever. Then that would, but if he, if he did that, no, no, because then he's got lasting trauma. He was only like dead PTSD. for nine seconds. Yeah, PTSD though from the shot and all that, and like you know, and there's other things. And like I could have given him a permanent injury, and no, 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 no. He, he's dead. Like he's just done. He suffered for a second, and now he's died. So he's not suffering anymore. The, this is the the the, the judge, agree, also, right? The judge also added, "Quote: Furthermore, it seems likely that the brushing of the buttocks was caused by an awkward maneuver of the defendant, which." due to the dynamics of the action, was carried out while the subject was in motion. So basically saying like, oh, he only groped her butt by accident. It's just the judge is just making stuff up. Just just, just, just fucking editorializing here on what he reckons happened. It's um, kind of hard he, to he do brushed, He brushed her buttocks, but only because he was going in for the atomic wedgie joke. Which is perfectly acceptable still. <laughs> like, that's uh, none of those things. You don't touch a student. Don't go near a student. Don't talk to students. Your job is to mop the floors. Don't be anywhere near students. Yeah. But also, like, it's hard to accidentally do something for five to ten seconds straight. Sure. Right. Like, you know, it's like no, no, you, you, you're still doing the thing. But like, like, none of that makes sense. Um, so yeah, so Italians, uh, like, Italians no one said the Italian justice system was. Uh, the, the Italian justice solid. justice system is is crooked as fuck. Obviously, our but, like, justice system's crooked as fuck. Yeah, <laughs> his justice system's crooked as fuck. But but Italy, I don't know. Italy is kind of famous for being like a extremely corrupt and b full of sex predators. Um, and it is nice that like at least the youth of this generation of Italians is like, hey this is completely unacceptable and we're going to make it a trend. Um, the, you know, the it was tr- videos on TikTok were trending using the hashtags palpata breve as in brief grope and uh, 10 secondi, 10 seconds. Um, and, and sort of highlighting how, how fucked it is that, you know, that you could be potentially abu- like, are we setting a precedent here that if you only briefly grope someone, it, like it's completely unacceptable. Just a there. little bit. But but the Italian youth are realizing that. I think for the longest time, there's been this real perception of Italy and masculinity in Italy. Mm. You know, it's like it's like a running joke when a when a woman walks down the street in Italy, she's going to be sort of like harassed and mobbed by Italian men trying to pick oh, her up. Or the White know. Lotus just straight did that. Yeah, in, well, but it's in Italy, right? It is Reference. a real it is a real yeah. phenomenon. I've been there with 
Uh, I've been in Italy and seen it happen to people where a woman is just walking unaccompanied and being sort of like harassed by a couple of different dudes, kind of like sort of you know, catcalling, walking down the street. And mm. um, like, it is a real phenomena where the, and, and even uh, I remember when I was there with my girlfriend at the time, you know, 10 years ago, where she was being like chatted up and propositioned by someone while we were walking together down the street somewhere. Like someone was propositioning her as we were, t- she could, they could see that she was there with her boyfriend, me, and like still propositioning. Like it, it is a thing in Italy where men are very sexually aggressive. Um, but I'm happy, and that's obviously terrible. But I'm glad that the youth of Italy today are sort of recognizing that and going, actually, that's not fucking acceptable whatsoever. Like it's not mm. just sort of baked. Oh, this is a thing we do. We have weirdly extremely Catholic slash extremely horny television <laughs> at the same time. Yeah, this weird kind of like Madonna whore complex that's going on <laughs> with, with Italian media and everyone's just gone, oh, that's normal. That's just how Italians are uh, mm. for the longest time. And yeah, I'm, gl- I'm glad to see it's changing, that, that, that at least there's a contingent in, in Italian society that's going, actually, this is not on. Um, yeah, I don't know. I thought it was good. Yeah. We'll see what mm. happens. I, I don't know whether they could appeal it or anything. It's a civil suit. Mind, or was it a criminal thing? I don't actually know whether it was civil or criminal, but... Uh... That's a good question. I'm not sure. Yeah. That was, didn't say in the article, I don't think, but uh, yeah, I don't sex, know whether you get sex, appeal. You're charged clearing a school te- caretaker of sexually assaulting a teenager. So, so, so it's a criminal. It's a criminal charge, yeah. Yeah, a trial on charges yeah. of sexual assault. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, there you go. <laughs> I just, the, the idea of a caretaker saying like, yeah, I groped her, but it was a joke. A like. Joke. Guys, don't be so serious. Like, oh, you a caretaker can't grope a single student. (laughs) Like, it's just crazy that you would think that that's appropriate. How did he get the job at the school as the caretaker? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Clearly, there's no fucking working with children check. They're like, when is it okay to grope a student for less than 10 seconds? A, never. B, seriously never. Or C, if it's a joke, don't be such an uptight bitch. (laughs) <laughs> like well, I see. And you go, correct. Come in, Antonio. <laughs> You're hired. That the is a funny joke. Painting. Well, I mean, any any working with children's check, I assume, does a lot of like checking for any actual like records of stuff happening. So there's always the first time. But also, I know I've never interviewed for a job where they've straight up had to go, all right, now this is the sexual harassment exam mm. um, of like, you know, yeah, the A, B, or C, what's the right thing to do? They only do that after they hire you. Okay. And normally, yeah, yeah. Normally, in my experience, yeah, you get the the online training module. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the like, compliance, hey guys, compliance the module. Annual, the annual compliance module to make sure <laughs> that you aren't sex pests again. <laughs> Even though, like, those modules are also still like quite sexist sometimes yeah. as well. Like, I remember once doing one at a previous job where, like, one of the one of the the uh, the slides was like, you know, hey. Don't um like you know just don't be commenting on other employees like appearance even if you're saying stuff like oh you look great today or whatever like you know or even if you are even whatever. if you are complimenting them yeah. don't do it but they had it had the little thing of brackets especially female coworkers like it's, it was just like a, especially hey, don't, don't do be this sexist, to the ladies especially with these dumb broads <laughs> yeah like there was just and I and I remember afterwards like going up to one of my female colleagues being like. About that, well, I saw that, and I was like, "That's been hot." And they were like, "Yeah, that's not chill, eh?" And like, yeah, even the fucking "Don't be sexist" training was sexist. Like, Jesus Christ! Don't be oh, sexist, especially oh, with these whores. Yeah, men are terrible. It's what happens when you have a writer's strike in America, because then you get shit content for the online training modules. That's what it's. It's all AI generated fucking content mm. for these modules. You need you need proper writers. Yeah. Mm. So it was concerning to see Deadpool 3 was still filming up until the actors striked. Can you imagine Deadpool with no writers? It's just Ryan Reynolds oh, vamping. Ryan Reynolds, just, oh. Ry- Ryan oh, Reynolds no. just, just flossing in front of the camera for 90 seconds. Just, just a segment in the second act where they're like, yeah, we just needed yeah. to vamp until the writers came back. Um, on that note, we have been, we are, and we always will be vamping here at Unnatural Selection. Uh, make sure you salubri- follow us at our salubrious home on the web. What's going on tonight? Uh, 
You fucked it. <laughs> Make sure you follow us at our salubrious home on the web, unnaturalshow.com. Make sure you follow us on all the social medias that have, do, or ever will exist at Unnatural Show. That's Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, and motherfucking threads. Make sure you follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and threads at George Tavos. You can follow me on Twitter at Tom D. Heath, and you can follow me on threads at Tom Dot Heath. I thought you were going to say at one one zero one zero one zero zero one zero one zero one one. I I I didn't understand that you guys have both been on for Threads, and I I feel like I should get a Threads account to to sort of you know keep up with you. So you can't follow me anywhere because I'm a ghost. Yeah, you're a ghost. I'm a, I'm a ghost, spooky ghost, mm, ghost protocol. Yeah. You're working mm. for the entity. I am. Mm. Mm. The entity mm. is here. Yes, yeah. it's here. It's watching us party. The lights on the wall. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. As a, as a spoiler for Mission Impossible. Fuck, I love right. that movie. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> there were a few points where I was like, I liked it. There were a few points where I was like, that's dumb. No, that was great. I was genuinely terrified <laughs> dumb. in that moment. <laughs> I was like, yeah, the lights on the wall are watching you, Tom. Like, Yeah, that's terrifying. <laughs> anyway. On that note... Uh, we have been, we are, no, we already did this. We, get out of here. We already here. did it. Goodbye. We'll go home. Go, go home. Go home. Get out Turn of here. Turn it off. Yeah. Get out of here. Yeah. Scram. Don't, don't have to go home, but you can't keep listening to us because it's going to end. Any second now. I'm firing out armor right now. Let's go. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> going. You're still going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, cool. Um, <laughs> still going. You guys, you guys come here often? Mm. Sometimes. <laughs> I guess, do you want me to go through other bits that I really liked in Mission Impossible Dead no, Reckoning? No, that's right. one. No. Oh, I right. And I will talk about it at length. Bye, 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 bye. <laughs>